The way we look at cities in my group are basically as complex systems. And there are many ways to define what complex systems are, but let me just try to give you some flavor of what these things are. And then I'll show you, again, illustrations of how they come up. So one of the things that's very important about cities and human societies in general is that they're very heterogeneous. We tend to, uh, we tend to emphasize this, of course, uh, uh, perhaps more in the West, but it's really true that each one of us is a little different. We have a different life experience, different tastes, different things we do, but we also earn different amounts of money, we have different knowledge, and so that's all important in how a city put, is put together. The city emphasizes and creates interdependencies between those differences, between businesses, between people, and so it's a very interesting system in that sense. So the second point I already spoke to is the fact that this difference is interconnected and that's what allows a city to work well. It's sort of the old mechanism of division of labor that in modern terms we tend to describe in terms of division of knowledge and deepening of knowledge. That depends on interdependencies but also depends on different people doing different things. The third aspect which I'll tell you a little bit about because it's been sort of methodologically important for our work has to do with this idea of scaling that different cities have different properties depending on their size. And as that size changes, um, certain things get emphasized more or less. And that's sort of important because that's very much in the nature of cities. And it means that a policy that used to apply to a city of two million or three million may not work anymore for, uh, um, or at least not exactly the same policy to a city that's double that size because some things go away as problems and other things appear. The other issue is this issue of circular causality. It's very difficult and, and it's quite different from many models that we have, including in economics, but also in the natural sciences, that uh, complex systems kind of don't have one-way causality. So for one example for cities that's very intuitive is the following. Does a rich city, uh, is a city rich because it has good infrastructure? Or does it have good infrastructure because it's rich? Well. It's neither, right? I mean, it just goes together. As a city gets a little bit richer, you expect better services and infrastructure. That, in fact, then allows people to lead somewhat different and more efficient lives or more creative lives that then pays for the improvements in infrastructure. And that's just an example. There are many things that need to go together like this. And sort of a, the vision of how to influence policy in cities has a lot to do with creating and fueling these virtuous cycles and sometimes vicious cycles that already are at play in a city. And finally, the idea that cities keep changing, so they keep developing and adapting.